Welcome, my name is Nikki Lewis and I'm the Coalition Coordinator of the West Springfield Care Coalition. Thank you for tuning in today for another segment of Care Connection. Joining us is Sarah Moriarty, the Director of the Hampton County Tobacco-Free Community Partnership. And today we're going to be discussing tobacco, specifically flavored tobacco products. Welcome Sarah. Thanks for having me. So since 2009, flavored cigarettes have been banned from the market, but other flavored tobacco products still exist. What are the impacts of this? Well, I think the impacts of that move is that we're still seeing that youth are able to access some flavored tobacco products. So they aren't able to get the flavored cigarettes anymore, but they're still able to get their hands on blunt wraps and cotton candy flavored whatever and chocolate things. So they're still able to get their hands on these junk products that they shouldn't be able to have access to. And how do having these variety of flavors appeal specifically to the youth population? Oh, well, obviously adults aren't attracted to these products. And mm -hmm. what happens is when we see these products on the market, it masks the flavor of tobacco. It's um, still accessible to youth or in every convenience store. Um, one of the things I tell people when I'm giving presentations is when you go into a convenience store, look at where these products are placed. And product placement is so important. And if you go into a convenience store and you see where these products are placed and how they're placed, first of all, they're in very brightly colored packages, which catch the eye of a youth. And then if you see where they're placed in a store, they're placed at eye level with the youth, which is a, an extreme measure of targeting for youth. So it's really um, a blatant move on the tobacco industry's part. Right. And while even though flavored cigarettes had been banned, Menthol and mint flavor still exist for all tobacco products, right? Right. The tobacco industry fought really hard in 2009 during that lawsuit to exclude mint and menthol, saying that they weren't a flavor, and they were able to keep mint and menthol out of that lawsuit. So um, mint and menthol are still on the market mm -hmm. at this time. Um, hopefully soon they will be excluded. Um, and mint and menthol actually coat your throat. You take longer, deeper breaths into your lungs. Um, and it, again, it's a flavor. It masks the, the taste of tobacco. Mm -hmm. So youth typically will use menthol cigarettes and menthol products and mint products at a higher rate than traditional tobacco. Mm -hmm. Right. And that makes these products more accessible to youth in a different way Absolutely. by having those appealing flavors and making that you know sensation not necessarily as harsh Absolutely. where that might be something they would previously avoid if it was just the tobacco flavors. Absolutely. So again, these flavors are more attractive to youth and they don't want to taste the regular tobacco and mm -hmm. the tobacco industry knows that. Mm -hmm. So would you say that this is the intention of the tobacco, the big tobacco companies? Are they using these flavors as a tactic to target the youth population? Certainly. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Of course, that's something that we hope to see changes in soon. But thank you so much for sharing that information with us today and sure. joining us. Sure. Thank you. And thank you for tuning in again for another episode of The Care Connection. Remember, collaborative accountability reaches everyone.